It's an absolute pleasure for me, Peter Churchill, to welcome you to the FEI World Cup Finals for Jumping Riders 2001. And yes, we're in Gothenburg in Sweden. This is where it all started back in 1979. So the finals have come back to their spiritual home in the Scandinavian Marina. Well, 40 riders from 13 leagues around the world qualified for the finals, 19 of them coming to their very first World Cup Finals. But before we settle into the Scandinavia Marino, you can see the crowds coming in. The crowds are all three days, are absolutely fantastic. Before we settle into the comfort of the Scandinavian Marina and the finals, we're going to take a look back to the highlights on the Western European League. First of all, with Berlin. Round four in the Villadrome in Berlin in Germany. Now, this is all about getting points on the Western European League to qualify for the finals. Those points running 20, 17, 15, 13, and then down by one to 18th place. But I'm Berlin, six came through for the uh, jump off. That's a tiebreaker against the clock. And we're going to pick it up with the first to go for the home country. It's 31 year old Rennie Tevel. And he's riding the 11-year-old Holsteiner bred uh, Moria. That's the name of the owner, Herr Moria. Franz Joseph Moria, to give him his full name. Le Patron. Uh, René Terbel actually won here in Berlin in uh, 92. He's made it to four World Cup finals in his career, finishing third in 99. Course designer Olaf Piesen set them seven fences, eight jumping efforts, 48 seconds of time allowed. Go over that time allowed, and they get one time for, for every second commenced. And as you can see, Tebel went for it from the bell. Piesen with his classical turn backs. The crowd absolutely riding it with him. Granny always saw this horse as a speed horse, but he said now he's a Grand Prix horse. But look how quickly he goes off the floor. Now that set the pace. 32.51. Clear round. 32.51. There's Franka Sutta, the pipe man, Ludger Birbaum there behind him, and this is Ludger's younger brother, Marcus Birbaum, 29 years old. We're looking back to last year, remember? <laughs> and this is ABC Charleston, 10 year old Holsteiner. Third to go out of the six finalists. This horse owned by uh, Klaus Ostendorf and uh, Marcus, married to the former American international Meredith Michaels, now riding for Germany. In fact, they were both uh, in the team that won the European Championship team gold medal a couple of years ago at Hickstead in the south of England. But he's got to go against uh, that 32 5 1 set up by Rennie Tebel. Some 12 to 14,000 pounds in prize money going in Berlin. I say some because obviously we're converting from Deutschmark. This was the tough turn back. We're seeing it from a different angle now. And look at the crowds behind us. We can see in the uh, cameras, there were huge crowds wherever we went. It's not going to be far off. They're calling Marcus Bierbaum home. They go for the long one at the last, but they're out. But by how much? Nine tenths of a second, would you believe? 33.42, and uh, that's, that, there is Meredith Michaels there. Yeah. Meredith Michaels, Birbaum, Marks his wife. So Rennie Temple still holding the lead in this uh, round four on the Western European oh, League. Right. In his smart livery of Team Ericsson, Switzerland's Marcus Fuchs with the Dutch bred stallion Tinker's Boy. And his second in the World Cup Finals last year in Las Vegas in the USA. Thirty-two point five one. 
And Tinker's Boy just being a bit of a Tinker's Boy there. Let's settle down. They're off from the bell, quick away from that first fence. Thirty-two five of one, remember, set up by Rene Tebo. Now look how short Fuchs turned up here with Tinker's boy. He's looking as if he's up on the splits time. Absolutely throws the long one, a massive jump to the last, and there it is. There's Rene Tebo with his owner. But, uh, as they say in German, spritz up, the job is done. Marcus Fuchs and Tinker's boy, 31.72, eight tenths of a second up. We saw so many tight finishes on the Western European League. It really was a, a, a vintage year. Look how far they, they took away two, what, two houses away they took off. Uh, that's the way to do it. That's what the jump off is all about. So it was Marcus Fuchs picking up the prize money and the 20 points there from Rennie Tebel, uh, Marcus Bierbaum, Ireland's Peter Charles and Norway's Gaia Gullickson. And the standings then after four rounds. Belgium's Ludo Philippas up at the top of the table from Thomas Voss. And uh, Rolf Gorenbinks on for Sweden. And here he is now in the jump off in Amsterdam. The Ra Stadium. And here in round five, we have seven come through for the tiebreaker against the clock. Five nations took part this time, and the prize money, some uh, 12,000 pounds. Ludger Beerbaum, we're going to pick it up with with uh, Champion de Lys, his 10-year-old uh, French bred, fifth in the draw of seven. America's uh, BZ Madden had an eight falter with Innocence. The pace has been set by the other American rider, Alison Firestone, only 22 years old, with a four falter in 39.79. That was on the Royal Future. So look at Team gold medalist Sydney 2000. Team gold medalist Atlanta Summer Olympic Games in 96. World Cup champion of 93. Fourth in the World Cup finals in Las Vegas last year with his top horse gold fever. Oh, bounced it. Let go, such a precise rider. Horse is always beautifully schooled. Look at that turn back, and they were able to kick off the tail as well. Long run then down to the last. Taking a safety check, he knows he's comfortably there. Beerbaum then from the fifth draw set the pace in Amsterdam with that 37.09. This is all part of the, the route to Gothenburg for the finals. A route that was a bit shorter this year because uh, at this point in time we didn't know it then, but uh, after the uh, January break, then of course came the dreaded foot and mouth disease and the restrictions on the moving of horses. But more of that later as we build up to it. Let's just enjoy the pictures we're seeing now. Rennie Tebel again. Well, Rennie Tebel, Ludger Birbaum, there's quite a bit of rivalry between them. And it's Le Patron again. As we saw, Tebel nicely placed on the league. And I say this horse very quick across the floor, but very quick off the ground as well. 37.09. Birbaum's left a bit of room there. Now starting to move up a gear. Lovely angle across that. Just up on that split time there of uh, beer bombs. Hit that on the button. 
then, like Fuchs in uh, Berlin, just went a thrower to the last. And this time, Tevel went one bet up, 35.03. And La Patron, who's well named this horse, isn't he? He's very much the boss, he certainly was at this point in time. got a nice quick one stride in there but look at the way this horse can get into the air off a quick stride so Freddy Temple this time uh, up in the front of the van from Lutgebirbaum Edward Coupery for France came through with a very steady clear there to take the third placing to Geneva now in Switzerland the finals were staged here in uh, 96. This is our uh, jump off board of seven. This one supported by uh, CCF Private Banking. Seven nations took part. Seven fences, eight jumping efforts. Time allowed this time, 58 seconds. As I say go over that time allowed. You're on one time fault for every second commits. Round six on the Western European League. This Polexpo Arena is a, just about the biggest indoor arena in Europe, if not one of the biggest in the world. We're going to pick it up with uh, Ireland's Peter Charles. Peter, of course, based in Britain, as you probably, most probably know, 40 years old. He rides for the track starter show jumping team. This is Carla Valley, 10 year old uh, British bred, registered in the uh, Anglo European stud book. Third to go out of the seven. P2 finished ninth with Carnavalli in Las Vegas, the uh, Budweiser World Cup finals last year. The pace had been set by uh, Jos Lonsink at that point in time riding for the Netherlands, but more of that story later. Lonsink with Katago Z to clear in 42.42. Had a terrific season on the Western European League, but unfortunately, in the end, although qualified, was not able to go to the finals in Gothenburg. Beautiful short turn back on that one, and he was up, in fact, on uh, Lonsink's time there, cut inside to the last fence and that was the one then that took over by 1.53 well in racing terms what we're talking uh, six to eight lengths peter charles then for ireland and carnavalli that 40.89 peter reads the competition so well but let's go and join our roving reporter sarah muir who is out the back and see what peter has got to say about that round Peter, excellent jump off round, fantastic. Yeah, um, you know, just handy having a mate there, Robbie Smith, just on the way in. He says, nip into the last there, you'll save yourself half a second, and you know, that just might make it for me. Thank you for your time. Peter Charles there with our Sarah and Robbie Smith, of course, being Robert Smith. He was competing in Amsterdam. Luda Filipatz from Belgium, 37 years old, Ludo. Uh, I say had an outstanding season on the Western European League as we'll see as our story develops. And he's riding the nine-year-old Belgian bred Otterongo. Six of the seven finalists finished seventh in the World Cup finals in Las Vegas last year. Won the Rolex Grand Prix here in uh, Geneva. That was worth some £20,000 to the winner. Can't be bad, can it? 40.89 set up by Peter Charles. Ludo finding a lovely short route through there. And he just a fraction up on that turn back. Now it's going to be about this uh, long run. He's taken that inside cut as well. Come on a very short angle. 37.68. 
Says it all, doesn't it? And that, in fact, is up by 3.21. We're talking about racing terms after Peter Charles. Well, now we can talk about a 10, 12 length lead set up there by uh, Ludo Filipatz. But he really needed that comfy blanket because still to come, the reigning FEI International Equestrian Federation World Cup champion. Here he is for Brazil. Rodrigo Pessoa, based in Brussels at his uh, legendary father's place, Nelson Pessoa, who must be one of the few uh, legends in his own lifetime, uh, sportsman father. Gandini Lianos, the 13-year-old Holsteiner. This is the horse that carried Rodrigo to uh, the individual world championship title in Rome in 98. Now he automatically qualifies for the finals, Rodrigo. He doesn't have to go chasing points. But this was his first outing, serious outing of the season. He's resting off his top horse, Balabé de Rue. Ooh, a little bit of the verbals there. Philip Parts, remember, 37.18. And he's up so far. World Cup champion for the last three years. And that's a record in itself. Rodrigo Pessoa thrilling the crowds. That picture says it all, doesn't it? Thirty-six point six zero. Up by one point zero eight. But does that matter? That's only here. Uh, an academic thing really look at the turn to the last there rodrigo pessoa then winning now this time we will join sarah and see what uh, rodrigo pessoa has got to say rodrigo congratulations fantastic jump off ride that was good. The looter was very fast. I had to try everything, but my horse really did his very best. Thank you. You've won the World Cup three times. Are you going to make it a fourth time in a row? Well, we're still a long way from the final, but I'm very happy doing today with this horse. Thank you. A long way indeed, but uh, can he make it that four in a row, Rodrigo Pessoa? So the full results then, uh, the win as we've seen for Pessoa, Ludo Filipats picking up the 17 points there for second place. Peter Charles consistent throughout the Western European League season. Jost Onsink, Marcus Bierbaum and the Swiss star Willy Meliger. On the Western European League, it's Ludo Filipatz now at the top of the table from Benson, Peter Charles, Marcus Bierbaum, Reddy Terbor, Voss, Mark van Dijk, and uh, Ludger Bierbaum and Jan Toss. There we go then. I'm sure you all recognize this one to the Grand Hall Olympia in London. What was it about a week, 10 days before Christmas? And Olympia, there was eight that came through for the jump off against the clock. This is round seven, and uh, this great uh, Christmas horse show that mixes festive entertainment with absolutely top class in sport as well. And we're going to pick it up with uh, our own Michael Whitaker. This time with uh, Anne Bedford's Handel II, this an 11 year old uh, Dutch stallion. Uh, Ludger Beerbaum had in fact set the pace with a four falter in 32.94. So the pressure was on. And Michael, typical ride from him, daring, chancing those short turns. The home crowd are with them. This is the last run. Flyer for the last. But oh no. There, you can just see it. The corner of our screen, that front rail. That is cruel. 28.70. Michael, who was the fourth to go. 
of the eight finalists and the crowd showing their appreciate absolutely packed the Grand Hall Olympia but then it is every year isn't it and now again Sarah was out the back and she had a word with Michael about that yeah, did he risk it then I probably would have won it, but that's how it goes, you know. You got to I lost go a bit it, of control, you? and then I just I thought maybe maybe it was, up. It was a big it was a big risk. It, it didn't come off. <laughs> well, here to take the risk. This is what the uh, jump off is all about. The tiebreaker in show jumping. He who dares doesn't always win, actually. But it's our man again, Rennie Tebble. Riddler Patron. At four in 28.7, no, no clear at this stage. Just about even Stevens there with Michael Whitaker on the turn back. Now the run for home. And another flyer at the last, and that one's the clean one. 29.28, Rennie Terrell for Germany, and Le Patron. Showing once again how uh, quick this horse is in between fences, as well as, uh, I say, that kick off the ground. And at this point in time, a win in Amsterdam, a second in Berlin, and now this win in London Olympia. Now let's join Sarah again with Rennie Terrell in the warm-up arena. Rene, congratulations, Thank your you. second World Cup win this season. Fantastic, you led yeah. from the start. Yeah, it's really, really good. This one is in the indoor shows, it's, it's the best shows I have ever had. And uh, I'm very lucky I'm qualified for the World Cup final now. And uh, yeah, London is a really good show for me. Rene Tebo, a winner in London Olympia. Round seven on the Western European League. Biatman Lee came through at the end of the jump off to get that second placing for Switzerland with Willy Medica taking third. In a very, very steady clear round. Michael Whittaker with that unlucky fourth placing. Well, now on the Western European League, as Rennie Turbel says, he is uh, quite definitely qualified for the finals. Luda Filipatz as well, Peter Charles and uh, Rolf Gorham Banks and those, uh, well, Birbaum as well. But the round 40 at this stage were definitely qualified to go to Gothenburg in Sweden. Well, we moved into the new year, the second half of the season, to the Pali Omnisport in uh, Paris for the Rolex. World Cup qualifier there, and this was round 10. 11 came through for the jump off this time, as you can see, a number of nations that were uh, represented by it, with Belgium's Ludo Filipatz, keep an eye on him, uh, the last one to go. They qualify now on the uh, night before to find the top 18 for these World Cup tournaments on the Western European League. And then they go in order of merit from the results of that qualifying speed class. And my word, uh, this season hasn't it produced a fantastic jump offs. And some of them like this with uh, 8, 10 or 11 taking part. Others with only three or four, but still outstanding competitions. We're going to pick it up with our own man in his virtual village uh, livery. Michael Whittaker with uh, Handel the second. Now the pace had been set by the Italian jockey, Jerry Smith riding Jamiro with a clear round in 43.47. Michael, who after Olympia finished second in uh, the Belgian round in Mechelen, riding uh, first choice Italian's young horse Tornado finished second in the Bordeaux Grand Prix so he really was on form at this point in time was 11th on the league Oof, that was a daring one 
and the big crowd in uh, Paddy Best. He spotted as well. Well, that set the pace by eight tenths of a second over Italy's Jerry Schmidt, Michael Whitaker, and Handel the second. Horses are wonderful creatures to watch, aren't they? They power, but at the same time, this wonderful dignity they have as well. Look at that for a turn back. They were, in fact, turning in the air, weren't they? Again, smooth with all the power coming from behind, and that was the one that Michael really had to dare the horse at. Last to go of the 11, Ludo Filipatz. This time riding uh, Paco, nine year old Belgian bred. And like Otorongo, Paco is by Darko. Darko was uh, Ludo Filipatz's uh, former Grand Prix horse. And now must be one of the leading uh, sires of jumping horses in Europe. Now Ludo had dead heated in Bordeaux with uh, Switzerland's uh, Vili Medica. They both stopped the clock on uh, 28.92. That was only the second dead heat on the Western European League since 1979. 42.69 was that time Michael Whitaker set up. That vertical rail's at one meter sixty, that's what, five foot five. He could eat a fraction up on that split time. This could do it. 42.69, it's 42.06. Well, now again, in racing terms, we can call that a photo finish, can't we? Six tenths of a second. Look at the crowds, the Pali Omnisport, and 12,000 of them. You've done it again. You've given us another exciting jump off, and you've won back to back Bordeaux and Paris. How's it feel? It feels very good. It feels me the same. My whole jump's incredible. He's going quicker and quicker. I'm very happy with him. He's jumping really well, isn't he? He's uh, jumping really well. He's getting much stronger than last year, and he's I'm very happy. Now Sarah working very hard for us out the back there. There's Rodrigo Pessoa, Jos Lonsink, Lars Nieberg. Now our head-to-head. -head. Michael Whittaker, Handel the second for Great Britain versus Ludo Filipatz for Belgium and Paco. Let's see if we can see where that six-tenths of a second was poached by Filipatz. In fact, had a fairly good lead here, but you can see Michael was not all that far away. We've got this synchronized, so it's fairly accurate. And Filipas made most of his ground, as we can see, on the early part of the course. Michael making his towards the end. They go to the last. It's what, a length up, half a length. So Ludo Filipas, our winner in uh, Paddy Bessie picking up those 20 points and the prize money. Michael Whitaker again there with a second placing. But uh, the points now were not meaning so much because of the uh, changes that had to be made. And the World Cup committee decided as we lost Oviedo, round 11 in Spain, and we lost Sir um in the Netherlands. And uh, well, it's 11 and 12, rather, that we lost. Therefore, it was the top 26 now that we're going to go to the finals. In Dortmund, only three came through for the jump off. And it was this man who was the last to go. 36-year-old Peter Wilde for the USA with Macanudo De Niro. And this essay turned out to be the final qualifier on the Western European League because of the travel restrictions on the outbreak of the foot and mouth disease. Now Peter from uh, Dover Plains, New York, 
state. He won in Mechelen in Belgium the same way as he's doing here. Lars Nieberg had had an eight falter. Heinrich Hermann and Engerman had had an eight falter. Had the nerve to go steady. Looking for the clear round. And it was there. Peter Charles. Peter Charles. Peter Charles is right, isn't he? Peter Wilde faced with uh, Henk Noren in the Netherlands. His second win on the Western European League. And once again, Alcer was out the back to chat to Peter Wilde. Just won your second World Cup qualifier this season here in Dortmund. You've already run in Mechelen. Um, it must feel fantastic. It feels absolutely fantastic. You know, I, I've been telling some friends of mine and that have been asking me how it's going, and I said, you know, this is a, a, a I'm following my dreams here in a sense, and they're coming true. And to be able to come here to Dortmund, you know, we all think of Dortmund as being uh, one of the best shows in the world, if not the best, most difficult show in the world. And uh, and to actually win the World Cup class is a real honor and a real thrill for me. I mean, you had some of the best riders in the world in that class. It must, you, it must be very daunting to ride in a competition against people like that. That's a, that's a perfect word to use, daunting, because uh, I'm always so intimidated when I come to these shows, particularly in Germany, because that's where the strongest riders in the world are. And certainly a, the collection of these riders here and to have to compete against them and to jump these kinds of courses really is uh, intimidating. But. Um, my horse is in perfect form right now. Um, I owe that largely to Hank Noren, who I've been working with in Holland. It's been a real uh, successful partnership that we've had. Um, the horse is in great form, and I feel like my riding is, I'm, I'm getting uh, a lot of my jitters out, and, and I feel like the, the horse and I are really together now, and uh, yeah, so it's, it's going really well. Well, Peter, in fact, did make it to the finals in Gothenburg. The final standings, though, on the Western European League. The winner of that league was Belgium's Ludo Philippas. We're all off now to the Scandinavian Marina in Gothenburg, Sweden. Well, the World Cup finals uh, are over a format of three legs. The first leg, final one, and that's uh, a speed class with four seconds added for a knockdown. They then go in order of merit from that leaderboard into final two, which is a jump off class, and then finally into the third leg, which is over two rounds. Now, we're just going to take the leaders of the uh, speed class to say it's four seconds added. We're going to pick it up with uh, Germany's Lars Nieberg, 37 years old, with the 10 year old Hanoverian bred uh, Esprit. Uh, Lars, who finished second in the World Cup finals of 95, that was behind Britain's Nick Skelton, who also rode a Hanoverian on that day, the great uh, Dollar Girl. And he finished second in 98, that was in Helsinki, behind Rodrigo Pessoa. And I say Rodrigo Pessoa, the winner of uh, the World Cup title for the last three years, has been won three years, uh, three times before by Austria's Hugo Simon, but never on three consecutive years. Olaf Peterson, the German course designer, did a brilliant job over the uh, three days in uh, Gothenburg. He set some tough courses and uh, some quite technical ones as well. But this one, I say, was all about uh, moving them across and around the arena for that uh, speed. Each leg was some uh, 18,000 pounds in its own right, and then there was. Uh, £50,000 prize pool then for the World Cup itself. And Nieberg then uh, set the pace with that 72.95 and clean. Lars, who's a day job as a stud manager. And he too was in that uh, German side that won the gold medal in Sydney 2000. For the USA, Ray Texel 
27 years old with Fleur Z, this 10-year-old uh, Holsteiner mare, formerly ridden by Britain's Michael Whitaker. And these two won uh, two Grand Prix in February on the Californian Desert Circuit, qualified through the East Coast USA League. Ray, who runs the Beverly Hills Equestrian Park. Now they drop that fence. You can see the four seconds is there. That's got to be added on. Texel then went up a gear from that. Bounce down that treble combination. Scandinavian Marina is an oval shape, so the riders have got to poach every bit of ground they can find. 72.95 have been set up by Nieberg at this stage. Look at that, and now he's moved up a gear again. Now, look at the time, but look at the time with the four added to it. 71.80. So that's 1.15 up on uh, Nieberg, in spite of dropping that rail. Ray uh, Texel for the USA and Fleur Z, where well, the Americans have won the World Cup title seven times since 1979, the Canadians three times. But uh, they've had a bit of a rough ride, though, since uh, John Whittaker broke that spell back in 1990 in Dorm Dortmund when he won his first World Cup of two with the great white wonder of show jumping, Milton. Rodrigo Pessoa, 28 years old, Bellabé du Roy, 12 year old uh, French bred stallion. I said earlier, the winners of the World Cup title 98, 99, and 00, 2000, and the world champion of show jumping. This horse covers a tremendous amount of ground. Rodrigo tends to take full advantage of it. When they won the title for the third, third time in Las Vegas, in the USA last year was without a single fault. Rodrigo looking very smart in his new picker uh, livery, isn't he? You'll see the Brazilian flag, flag on his uh, crash helmet as well, rather nice touch. Now defending champion looking very comfortable. 71.80 set up by the American rider Ray Texel. In this first leg of the FEI World Cup final 2001 and that's that's the champion defending his title. 70.13, he's up by 1.67 on uh, the American Ray Texel's time of 71.80. Now let's join Rodrigo and get his feelings about that good start. The horse was feeling very good and um, this was really the worst class for me. Um, and I'm happy I, I have that one out of, out of the way and I can concentrate on the, on the next two rounds, but it's still a very long way to go, but it looks, it looks good. Well, a long way indeed, and there was still this man to come, Michael Whitaker, with uh, Anne Bedford's handle the second. Michael, who's finished six times in the top ten in World Cup finals. As I said earlier, big brother John with uh, Milton. Won it back to back in 1990 Michael playing it fairly safely. Not taking too many risks. That triple rail there with a spread on it of uh, 1 meter 70. So what's that? 6 foot 6. That's that treble combination coming out over the parallel. Turns away from that quickly. 70.13 set up by defending champion Rodrigo Pessoa. 71.80 by the American Ray Texel. Michael's in fact moved up a gear now, hasn't he? 
But on that turn back, he's a bit off the pace as he comes to the last. But it's a good time, though. 72.29. Now that's good enough for third place. Rodrigo Pessoa having uh, won the first leg, the speed class of the uh, FEI World Cup Finals 2001 in the Scandinavian Arena in Gothenburg. And look at the way Michael set up for this one. Just wait and wait until he saw that stride right and then went for it. So our first leaderboard then, Rodrigo Pessoa at the top of the table. And uh, Ray Texel then for the USA and Michael Whitaker for Great Britain. Now the scoring, the first leg and the second leg, the winner was given two points more than the number of riders started. That was 40. And then the second gets, uh, in other words, 42. The second gets 40, and it goes down by one. But as you'll see, after final two, which is a jump-off class, a coefficient is used then to convert those points into penalties. And then it really closes up at the uh, top of the leaderboard. So, final two, one round, those on equal scores coming forward to the jump off against the clock, and 12 it was, they're all listed for us here, that came through to take on Olaf Peterson's course of eight fences, nine jumping efforts, and the time allowed, 54 seconds. Go over that time allowed, and they get uh, one time for, for every second commenced. There were four for the USA, two for Belgium, two for Germany, one for Sweden, one for uh, Switzerland, one for Brazil, and one for Great Britain. And to open it up for us, Jos Lansing, 40-year-old Jos, who at the beginning of the year switched to riding for Belgium after so many years of uh, Olympic medals, national titles, and oh, you name it. Jos got them for uh, the Netherlands, but he renewed his contract riding for Leon Melchior Zangerscheid stud in Belgium for a further five years and decided it was time then to uh, set up home and take up uh, Belgium nationality. And my word, doesn't that mean the Belgium side's going to be strong at the European Championships this summer? Jos took it fairly steady. He was 34th on the leaderboard, so he was uh, didn't get a great start in that uh, leg one. You'll see that awkward turn there to that Ericsson wall and that final fence standing at 1 meter 60. Another one at 5 foot 5, 5 foot 6. So a 4 foot up for Lonsink for Belgium and uh, TNT Karatana Z 47.83. That's going to definitely bring them up the leaderboard though. Having got into this final 12, I say they were uh, 34th before we started this uh, jump off. Thomas Voss was the next to go for Germany. Thomas, 42 years old, and he's riding the 11-year-old Holsteiner bred stallion, Clinton. Uh, Thomas, who was uh, consistent throughout the Western European League, both the first half and the second half. Very successful breeder of jumping horses. In fact, he was telling me in Gothenburg he's uh, supplied so many top horses to other riders that have gone on to great things. He thought, well, I'll keep Clinton back for me, and it's time I had to go to the door. And uh, here they are. And uh, Thomas, one of the uh, 19 riders at their very first World Cup finals. 31st on the leaderboard after the speed leg. This is a marvellous horse. Thomas says it's always trying. It's got a heart the size of a football. Sometimes the technique's a bit unorthodox. Look at the way he throws his uh, front toes out instead of that snap up in front. But tries his heart out. To be careful, you can see it there. And in fact, got a kick off. Nothing to keep that one together. Very short turn into that wall. There's another one at 1 meter 60. Cruises home over the last, so that set the pace and that clear. 47.73, Thomas Voss for Germany and Clinton. And that'll move them way up the leaderboard, say 31st when uh, after the speed class. But uh, let's just see them again coming. Uh, through that double. Here we can see it, looking at it now from a better angle, actually. 
there's the one quick stride. The horse stretching for that back bar and then having to take a kick out of nothing to uh, make that spread. Leslie Howard, Westport, Connecticut. And she's riding Priya Bear. The Calvary, nine year old uh, Belgian bred. Well, it was in this arena back in uh, 96 that uh, Leslie, then known as Leslie Berlinahan, won the World Cup title for the USA. She's been to 16 finals in her career. 24th on the leaderboard after the speed class. Ooh. Looked as if they're going to lose their line, but saved it with power. There's that short turn into that wall. We've got a clear in 47.73. This is going to be quicker, but it isn't now. That was a close call, 41.13 for Leslie Howard. And that fourth falter again, that will bring her up the leaderboard. She's 24th on the leaderboard after the uh, opening speed leg. And they just brushed it in front and then pulled it from behind. Get away with nothing now, with these light materials and flat cups. It's, uh, it's an unforgiving game. The fourth to go out of the 12 in this uh, final two, the FEI World Cup Final 2001. Ludo Filipatz, this time with Otterongo, a 10 year old Belgian, Belgian bred. And I say Ludo won the uh, Western European League easily on uh, points, picking up the Eurosport uh, La Ligue trophy, which was presented to him here in uh, Jutteburg. Didn't get a great start though to the finals by his standards. He was 23rd after the speed class. We cut in very short there. There's plenty of room to spare on that time of Thomas Vosses from the second draw of 47.73. Good angle. This is the bit that's going to count. But he's not going to take a chance on that one. He'll move on now to the last. Leave this one standing, and Ludo Filipas Notarongo will take the lead for Belgium, and they did. 42.08. Comfortably. Nearly six seconds up on... Uh, about five and a half seconds up on Thomas Voss's time. So the pressure now going forward down the line as we come to the uh, fifth to go of our 12. Nicole... Shahini and Simpson with El uh, Campiones Circa Z. Nicole from a Thousand Oaks, California. It's a lovely name, that, isn't it? Her husband, uh, Will Simpson, competed in the World Cup finals here in the Scandinavian Marina in '93. And Nicole, 22nd on the leaderboard after the speed class. Got a good cut through, but came much deeper than Philip Arts. Now, this is where they can play a game of numbers. In fact, it's all about climbing up the leaderboard at the moment. Ready for that uh, two-rounder of final three. Well, that, in fact, goes into second place. Shrewd round that by uh, Nicole Simpson. 45.31 against, uh, obviously, Philip Bartz uh, cracking 42.08. But it pushes Thomas Voss down into uh, third place with his uh, 47.73. Uh, we're staying with the USA, and this is Peter Wilde from Dover Hills, New York State. But he's been based in the Netherlands with uh, trainer Hank Noren now for some time. Macanudo De Niro. That's a Dutch bred Peter. Not a great start for him either. He's 21st all year, and that's the first fence. That must be heartbreaking. 21st on the leaderboard. After that's uh, speed class. 
former Pan American uh, team and individual silver medalist, but it's not coming together for them at all this time. Oh, and they're absolutely wrong and out of their ground there. Now, Peter's decided to uh, just run around to settle the horse down, so that's treated like a run out. Yes, four faults for that, just like a refusal, but uh, there you are, these uh, light rails and uh, little flat cups, it just makes it so much safer. Not so many years ago, that could have been a nasty accident. So they have time faults building up as well now, so Peter Wild will be dropping down the leaderboard rather than up it. They finish on a 17 falter, but that uh, 54.69 as well. Seemed to come in right. Dropped, in fact, just that little bit too short. Didn't back away from it. The horse, rather like um, Thomas Voss's Clinton, trying to get a kick off nothing, but it just wasn't there this time. Or well, the possibility wasn't there. Now we're still with the USA. For the seventh one to go of our 12. And it's Candice King from Wellington, Florida. And she's riding the 15-year-old uh, Dutch stallion, John E.M. Well, Candice, under her maiden name, Schlamm, competed in the World Cup finals of 91 and 92. 14th on the leaderboard after the speed class. Our leader still, at this stage, Ludo Philippartz for Belgium at 42.08. Nicole Simpson for the USA in second place for the 45.31. And Candice again not going to go turning up short. Playing it fairly safely. Mm, that's the way to jump that second element, isn't it? Now she needs to move on a bit now. Just letting this uh, tall Dutch stallion cruise on to the last there for that fourth falter in 46.16, which puts her in fifth place at the moment. That was a clean run, wasn't it? But they just dropped that bit short. It looked absolutely right, as it so often can. Well, you heard the crowds, and this was the reception for one of Sweden's superstars of this sport, Peter Eriksson. Peter, 35 years old. In fact, I beg his pardon. He's, in fact, uh, 40 years old. But there's no ageism, genderism, or any other sort of isms in uh, international show jumping. And Peter now rides for the VDL stud based in uh, Belgium. This is a nine year old Holstein Stallion, Cardento. Peter's been to eight World Cup finals in his career, finished sixth here in 95. That was the year the now retired Nick Skelton won it for Britain with the Dollar Girl. 13th on the leaderboard, but that's going to drop him down. And again. Leaderboard now, particularly under the uh, top three, uh, start to change dramatically in this uh, second leg. A four more to go after Peter Eriksson. Ludo Filipouts for Belgium from the fourth draw with that uh, lead of a clearing 42.08. Nicole Simpson for the USA then with a clearing 45.31. And Peter Eriksson now with that eight falter will drop him down the leaderboard in 45.32. Just caught it on the way up. They've just got in that little bit deep. Lutke Beerbaum now for Germany, the ninth of our 12 finalists in this final two, the second leg. 
for the FAI World Cup finals in the Scandinavian Marina, Gothenburg, Sweden. Ludger, 39 years old, the World Cup uh, champion, 93. And this is with uh, Madeleine Winterschultz's 10 year old Hanoverian stallion, Gold Fever. And so they finished fourth in the World Cup finals in Las Vegas uh, last year. 11th on the leaderboard after the speed class. 42.08 seconds, the pace set by the Belgian international Ludo Philippatz. Oh, and Ludger's very tight to both those turnbacks. Takes a tight angle across that one to swing round to this wall. Comes in very short. Too short. Absolutely wrong. Totally wrong. And that was a heavy fall for Ludger. But I can tell you, he was more annoyed with himself. Gold fever, as you can see, absolutely fine. But once again, uh, in fact, it looked to me as if Ludger got a kick on the head there as he rolled over. But once again, doesn't it prove about the light materials now in modern show jumping? Absolutely safe. Now let's just see it now from this angle. There you see that there was no room for a takeoff stride. The horse had no option really and was able to go through those light materials. There, see, that's where I thought Lutka got a kick on the head there as the horse went away from him. I'd say it wouldn't have been so many years ago. Something like this happening would have turned gold fever completely over. In fact, he's quite a long way away from uh, Ludger. Ludger was rolling away, but I say it was more uh, annoyance than anything. Well, that meant he was eliminated from the jump off, so that put him, or in the jump off rather, so it put him down in 12th place no matter what happened. Marcus Fuchs, the 10th to go. Marcus, uh, 45 years old, with Tinker's boy. That's 12 year old Dutch bred stallion. Finished uh, second, I think I mentioned that earlier on. Finished second in the World Cup Finals in Las Vegas uh, last year. Sixth on the leaderboard after the speed class. Marcus who finished third in the World Cup Finals in Del Mar in California in 92. So he obviously uh, likes his trips to the USA. Forty two point zero eight was set up by the Belgian international Ludo Philippartz. And Marcus not looking uh, all that quick at the moment. He's playing it very carefully around to the Ericsson wall. Not gonna be that very far out. This could be useful. Forty three point seven three. A one point six five off the pace of uh, Ludo Philippartz at forty two point zero eight. But that's good enough to uh, Go into second place. Nicole Simpson for America, that clear in 45.31. She dropped down a place. How's that for a look of concentration and focus? Rather well, tells the story of the sport, doesn't it? Second last to go then. Michael Whittaker. Right, uh, handle the second. Third on the leaderboard, remember, after the speed class. And it's after this one that their points get converted into penalties, so you'll see it will close up. There'll be very little between them. Then Michael's off. Michael, who uh, telling me in Paris Bess, he just had a little bit of this also, a bit impetuous to tend to snatch at him, but he just seems to have found the key to him now to get this more accurate control on the flat. Look at the way he's cut inside there. First one to do that. Now Michael's flying. 42.08. He's just about the same on the split time. Michael Whitaker for Britain and handle the second. They stopped it. 39.73. And look at the margin. 2.35. Annihilated that time of uh, Ludo Filipatz for 42.08. From the fourth draw, Michael coming from the 11th draw of 12. And that now has put the pressure onto the uh, 
defending champion. Here he is, Rodrigo Pessoa and Balabé de Rue. In front of this huge crowd in the uh, Scandinavian arena. This really is show jumping sport at its best. 39.73 as Rodrigo's fan club. 39.73 Michael Whitaker for Great Britain. 42.08 Ludo Filipouts for Belgium. Marcus Fuchs then for Switzerland. 43.73. That was the situation as the uh, three times World Cup champion Rodrigo Pessoa and Balabé de Rue came to this first fence. Now will Rodrigo go for that inside cut? Not. He's going to scoop round the outside. Now to the last two. 39.73, Michael Whitgar. This one's going to be a very close call as they go to the last. It isn't now. The cracking time, but that one rail on the floor for Rodrigo Pessoa that will drop him down the leaderboard now after this uh, jump off class in the second leg. Let's join Michael Whitgar, see how he felt about this. I didn't really mean to go that fast, but it was jumping so well that things were really working, so I just kept going, you know. Well, kept going, he certainly did, because uh, that put Michael Whitaker at the top of the leaderboard on zero. They've been converted to penalties now. And as you can see, there's only four penalties between the top three. And that's the value of a fence, isn't it? Fence is four faults. How close they go. We're now on the final day, the third leg, over two rounds. We're just going to follow those three leaders in uh, the first round, round A, where... Uh, well, Pitson gave them uh, a course of 14 fences with 17 jumping efforts. It was a long one. Well, Marcus Fuchs and Tinker's boy, they came back with one time fault to uh, put them on five penalties. Rodrigo Pessoa, that one penalty adrift from Michael Whitaker on the overnight leaderboard, and Balabé de Rue, they came down this final line with absolute accuracy. And uh, that was a clear round then for Pessoa. He's coming back then at Michael Whitaker and handle the second. But it was the other way around this time now. That uh, rail coming off there in the combination meant that uh, Michael Whitaker dropped to equal second. It's now fences being added to those penalties. Pessoa was back in the lead. Meliga, Filipart, and then the USA. And look at the way they were packing into the top 12. Now, talking about that, let's get an overview from one of them, uh, Molly Ash. I'm a little disappointed. I would have loved to have done been higher placing, but ha very happy at the same time. Yep, I think it's all positives that we're leaving with, and we can never complain about that. So we go now into the final round, the second round of the third leg. We're going in order of merit and uh, we'll be following the leaderboard all the way through. Nicole Simpson, we join it with. And Nicole riding uh, Circa Z again. On uh, 11. Uh, penalties. In fact, she was in 12th position on the leaderboard because she had an 8 falter in uh, a 4 falter rather, on her first trip, so she's on 15. And this is where the leaderboard switches up and down. Olaf Peterson this time, giving them uh, for this second round, 11 fences, 13 jumping efforts, a time allowed of 62 seconds. We'll have plenty of time to study this course of uh, Peterson's. Five foot six, one piece of sixty. This final line, a classic uh, Peterson line, big spread on triple rails. One, two, three, and go. Narrow one there, 
and then four strides over to the last. So uh, Nicole then Simpson, the four footer. So her final total then, 23 penalties. We'll see, of course, the rankings we're getting are according to the, uh, the run of play. But uh, that triple rail's just coming off the, the turn there. Top bar on it at 1 metre 55. It's uh, just under the 5 foot, isn't it? About 4 foot 10. And the spread on it of over 6 foot 7. Marcus Bierbaum that we saw earlier on. And uh, just sitting rather patiently up in the jockey stand there for uh, brother Ludger. Ludger and uh, Gold Fever. Uh, Ludger 11th on the leaderboard at this stage. And he had nine faults though on his first trip, picked up one time fault, so he was slipping away down the uh, leaderboard in actual fact, coming to the second round. And as you can see, absolutely fit as a flea, and so is Gold Fever. And in actual fact, after that dreadful looking fall, Ludger went on to win the Gothenburg Grand Prix on the Sunday, the rest day, riding his other top horse, Figaro's boy. Just that bit deep, treble combination, vertical, one stride to a box parallel. And that was the double there at uh, fence five. So this is going to drop Ludko down that leaderboard uh, even more so now. But you see the way he's widening this turn to come round to the uh, Triple rail, jumping up a staircase. One, two, three, and that was committed. They had to do it in three and had to do this one in four. It's the sort of question that Peterson asks of his competitors. So that uh, eight fault up, and uh, Marcus Bierbaum looking a little bit philosophical about that. A final total of uh, 27 penalties for Ludger Bierbaum and uh, Gold Fever in this final round of the FEI World Cup Finals 2001, presented by Ericsson, as we see there. Ooh, that was a toe. We're going in order of merit, remember, as we said earlier on, Ray Texel now. Ray with uh, Suzanne and David uh, Zappersteins. Fleur the Z, Fleur Z rather bred at the Zangerscheid stud that we were talking about earlier on, formerly ridden by Michael Whitaker. Now he was in equal seventh place on the leaderboard. There were three, equal eighth place rather, there were three of them on uh, 18 penalties. And uh, Ray was telling me in Gothenburg that uh, Fleur Z can be a bit of an assertive lady sometimes. He, and she's uh, can just get into one of these moods. He said, when she's fighting me, she's fighting the fences and tends to fight herself, but uh, lost form completely in this final round. And if only four faults on their first trip. Very delicate, sort of narrow vertical, that one, isn't it? Now the run home. So it's 12 faults to add. The time allowed, uh, fairly generous there at 62 seconds. But, uh, so that put Ray Texel on a final uh, score of 30. And so the Americans really coming back this time. It's tremendous uh, form, a lot of untried talent, a lot of young talent amongst their group of riders in uh, Gothenburg all led and held together by and inspired by uh, uh, genial American uh, show jumping coach Frank Chapeau. Peter Wilde then. This time he switched to uh, Fein Sierra, 10 year old Holsteiner mare. They can, if they qualified two horses for the finals, they can. Peter, another one that was on those 18 penalties on the leaderboard in this uh, going into this final round. Only had a four falter on his first trip. Look 
looking very tidy so far. Peter looking for his line down here, asked for the power, then just got to check back. Beautifully does that. And it's a clear. Comfortably inside that uh, time allowed of 62 seconds. So Ray Texel stays on his... Uh, Peter Wilde, rather. We had Ray Texel earlier, wasn't it? Peter Wilde then stays, there we are, stays on his 18 penalties overall. Which is going to put them... Should put them in somewhere in the top 12. Or not very far outside it. We'll see as we develop, because we are going in order of merit in this final round. Once again, the Scandinavian, as we can see, absolutely packed on this final day. Leslie Howard, another one on 18 penalties at this stage. And Leslie with the uh, higher ground farms. Priobert, the cavalry. that uh, Leslie and uh, our owners think a lot of, but she said this is the first time we've really uh, thrown him in at the deep end. He's a lovely, big, powerful horse, isn't he? And Leslie again only had a four falter on her first trip. for this big spread. Settle back then for very narrow box parallel there. And that one is a 1 meter 55 box parallel, that last one. They're just about on the five foot mark and it's a very tidy clear round as well. Now there's prize money, individual prize money for each leg, but in this one there was no jump off either to decide that. So it's those over the two rounds on equal scores that pick up that prize money. I'd say it's something like uh, 18,000 pounds. And there is uh, Ray Texel there, and that looks like uh, Candice King, but that's Frank Chapeau there I was talking about early on in front of us. Lauren Hoff with the Classica groups. Classico, his 10 year old uh, Horsteiner. Lauren, whose father was an Olympic Games three day event rider for the USET. They come from Ocala, Florida. Team six at Sydney 2000. And Lauren, who's uh, a full time show jumping coach. She's in seventh place on the leaderboard in, uh, with 15 penalties at this stage. Oh, made that look so easy. Got a four falter on our first trip. Peter Wilde moving up the leaderboard along with Leslie Howard and they just uh, seem to miss the kick off the ground there. And again, you can see with the light materials, no harm done. I'll say we have Peter Wilde and Leslie Howard moving up the leaderboard. We had Ray Texel dropping down it and now Lauren Hoff as well dropping down that leaderboard with that uh, final total of 23 penalties. The ranking, I say, that we're seeing at the moment is the ranking in running. And the horse seems to be perfectly sound trotting away there. Quite happily. It seems to be right. Half went off, couldn't get enough kick off the ground. And it's literally flattened it. But again, there you are, no damage done. Candice King now. For the USA, with uh, John E.M. Had a 
four faults on her first trip. It's sixth place on the leaderboard. Starting to get near the business end now. Five foot five, that vertical. Box, box parallel there of uh, four foot nine. Big spread on this triple rail. Oh, and just pull that front rail on the last fence, Candice King and uh, Johnny M. 15 year old Dutch bread. Well, that's going to hold them at just about. They'll drop down slightly, in fact, on the leaderboard because they're six before uh, this round, last round started. We've seen Ludger Bervan drop down the leaderboard as well. Ludo Filipparts now in fifth place on the. Uh, Leaderboard, and this is with Otto Longo again. Had a clear on his first trip. He's come all the way up from 23rd on the leaderboard, Ludo, with Paco and with Otto Longo since the first day. Just about should hold them somewhere around about the same place. No. Now the gap starting to open at the top of the leaderboard. So it's going to drop Ludo down. In fifth, it's going to drop him, could drop him outside the top ten, depends how it all develops. But now, with the three down, it will just inside the time, but out there, by the way, I notice of uh, 62 seconds, so they're on 23. The final penalties for this uh, FEI World Cup finals 2001. Vili Meliga now for Switzerland with this uh, fine, upstanding creature. Calvaro the fifth. Fifteen year old Holsteiner bred. Vili, forty seven years old, fourth on the leaderboard. Finished second in the World Cup finals behind Hugo Simon in Geneva back in ninety six. This horse has got so much power, he's massive. Just tall, he's a very big horse as well, but my word, isn't he? Athletic and dignified with it as well. Marvellous kick off the ground. Now, Vili and uh, Cavara the fifth had a clear run on their first trip. Look at that. Go on, my son. No problems. Double clear round then for Vili Malaga and Calvaro the fifth. And there's Candice King looking on. The young American rider. And doesn't the crowd uh, appreciate that as well? So stays on his ten penalties, which means that Vili stays, in fact, in his fourth place. Holds that fourth place uh, on his leaderboard. A lot will depend now on what uh, his fellow countrymen is going to do. Third place on the leaderboard. Just look at this lovely big horse. It's a joy to watch. And Vili's hat has just come down over his eyes as well. It doesn't seem to bother him one bit, does it? Marcus Fuchs then. With uh, Stephanie Vegas Houses, Tinker's Boy. Third on the leaderboard, one time fault on their uh, first trip, so they're now on four penalties. And he 
he's got to put that pressure. Remember, he's uh, him and Michael Whitaker are both on four. And only three penalties uh, ahead of them is Rodrigo Pessoa, so they've got to push that uh, pressure forward. and uh, he's handsome too, isn't he? Now the turn to that uh, big spread, the triple rail. This uh, distance line going down the final run. They're going to have to watch that time allowed again, though. They're there, Marcus Fuchs and uh, Tinker's boy, but again, it's one time for 62 seconds of time allowed. There's Jos Lonsink, the uh, Belgian international behind him, Otto Becker, the German international. So five penalty points now for Marcus Fuchs and uh, Tinker's boy. John Whitaker on four, Rodrigo Pessoa on one. Not much between them, is there? Lovely throw of the back end, Tinker's boy's got him. He does straight to the sky, doesn't he? And now, Michael. This is a pressure situation. Michael and then Bedford's handle the second. They've always been there or thereabouts since this started on the first day with the speed class. Four fourths on his first trip, and Michael reckoned that was entirely his own fault. We saw it earlier on. So settled now. The crowd are with them too. The Swedish fans think an awful lot of Michael and John Whitaker. Drives for that triple rail. Oh no. Oh, they didn't really deserve that. And I'm not being biased, not being chauvinistic. So, Marcus Fuchs now on five penalties. Michael Whitaker on eight drops him into third place. We've got Willy Melliger then for Switzerland in fourth. And I make it then. We've got Candice King then for the USA in uh, fifth. In fact, Michael did all oh, look at that. It was a hoof nail. And Michael did say afterwards, he said the first round there. Fair enough, it was his fault he got the, the rail down, but in the second round he really was a bit unlucky. But you can't change it. It's there on the scoreboard, and this is the build-up now. To the defending champion, Rodrigo Pessoa and Balobe de Rue. Winners of the World Cup title for the last three years. First time that's been done. It's been won three times by uh, Hugo Simon of Austria, but this is, there is Father Nelson Pessoa, who in fact finished uh, second twice in the World Cup Finals. Rodrigo won penalty. Three penalties in hand, so he hasn't got a fence in hand. In fact, he has got a fence in hand, hasn't he? Because Marcus Fuchs is on five. So, in fact, it's a, a margin of four penalties. Four faults, in other words. The 
Souls by the great French jumping stallion Galibet. Ooh, bit of a playboy. Talking the horse through it. This narrow little white vertical rail. Now to the run home on that three strides and four. Rodrigo Pessoa and uh, no! Now he's got to hold it at that. And he has. We're into a jump off now. Rodrigo Pessoa and Balave de Rue finishing up on uh, five penalties. Marcus Fuchs then on five penalties. So it goes to a jump off. Only the third time since the uh, World Cup started back in 1979. The very first one in 79. Let's just see it. The horse just didn't seem to get a comfortable kick off the ground at all there. So in 1979, it was Austria's Hugo Simon riding Gladson in a head-to-head -head jump off against the uh, American Katie uh, Monaghan on the Jones boy. Hugo winning the second jump off then was in 96 in Geneva, and it was Hugo Simon again winning it with uh, E.T. And that's uh, Rodrigo's uh, supporting team there, and there's the uh, father as well. And I say that 96 jump off Hugo Simon that was in the Prolexpo in Geneva versus uh, Vili Melega with Calvaro the fifth. So we go into our third jump off to decide the World Cup trophy. And the jump off course, seven fences, eight jumping efforts. Thomas Fuchs to go first with uh, Tinker's boy. This lovely chestnut horse produced by the uh, now retired. British international Nick Skelton. He brought this up, uh, horse up through the divisions in Britain. And what a super job he's given him, too. Well, Marcus has really has got to put pressure on to Pessoa now. Isn't it interesting? Marcus Fuchs finished second in the uh, World Cup finals in Las Vegas last year. And Rodrigo won it. This time, the two of them are in a head to head jump off against the clock to find the uh, new World Cup champion. And Marcus has decided he is going to put that pressure on to Pessoa. Going for it. Yes. Now he's got to come round for the home run. It's a cracking time. 35.25. Look at that. 35.25 and clear. Marcus Foot for Switzerland and Tinker's boy. They haven't left much room in there for Pessoa at all. And there's uh, Tinker's boy, Bill Groom, waiting for him. And experience it must be looking after horses like this. Thirty-five point two five and clear for the two thousand and one International Equestrian Federation World Cup title of show jumping. Too. He's moving on. He's got Balabeda Ray in a super strong stride. And in fact, he's just slightly up on that uh, split time. But he isn't now. He's blown it. Marcus Fuchs. And if I even more so, Marcus Fuchs is the new World Cup champion. Rodrigo Pessoa and Balabé de Rue have been beaten 
after three consecutive years of holding the title. What a wonderful sporting occasion. That's what sport's all about, isn't it? Marcus Fuchs for Switzerland. And this really is how he won it. Rodrigo said Balabe just got a little bit too stirred up. And C just slipped a bit as well on the footing, but he said that's no excuse. And there's the reaction up in the jockey stand, which again says it all, doesn't it? And Father Nelson. But they know the sport well. There's our official result then. The five and the five was before the jump off. Marcus Fuchs with the clear round in the jump off. The new World Cup champion of the International Equestrian Federation. But look at the American riders. Six American riders in the top 12. A tremendous performance there and a super performance for our own Michael Whitaker. Michael Whitaker, that's his second time he's finished third. Let's get the post mortem from our hero. As Rodrigo, I had to challenge him. And uh, many times I felt when I ask a, a lot from my horse, you know, especially in Champions when I go fast, he is absolutely is, uh, fantastic then, uh, like he's working with me. And uh, I was lucky, I was clear, and so he had to go fast. He had to, to take uh, uh, a lot of risk. Marcus Fuchs, the team Ericsson, the new World Cup champions of show jumping and the International Equestrian Federation come forward now to be honored in front of the crowd of some 12,000 in this Scandinavian arena in Gothenburg in Sweden. Now, how's that for a poser? Isn't Tinker's boy just that? National anthem now in honor of our winners. Cup trophy. What a tremendous finish to these finals. We've seen drama from the beginning and towards the end. We've seen excitement. We've seen riding skills at their absolute best. We've seen show jumping horses turned out to perfection. Really class horses all the way. And the super courses as well. Marcus Fuchs uh, riding Tinker's Boy. The FEI World Cup Champions of Show Jumping 2001, the first Swiss rider to win that title. And just how did they win it? Wasn't it fantastic? The style in which they won it in their head to head jump off against the three time champion, the Brazilian Rodrigo Pessoa. Absolute joy to watch, isn't it? And Marcus Fuchs always says that he's not a gifted rider. He said, I have to work hard at it, my word. He's very effective if that's the case, isn't he? So we leave you with uh, Marcus Fuchs and Tinker's Boy, FEI World Cup champions and show jump in 2001. It's been an absolute pleasure for me, Peter Churchill, and for all our team to uh, bring this World Cup final to you. And we sincerely hope you've enjoyed it too.